Hey guys, Brian here. Today's video, we're gonna talk about the enclosure, some of the updates that I've made, and give you guys just kind of a little tour of the corner of the shop here, and kind of uh, give you guys an update on some of the changes I've made over the last two, two and a half months or so. So I'll give you guys a quick tour of the corner of the shop here. I have the, the print and see enclosure in the corner here. To give you guys some perspective, I had my MPC and C enclosure, kind of like right where the monitor is, so you know, with the print NC being slightly bigger, I kind of just revamped the entire corner of the shop here. So I finally have it all together. I have it mostly sealed up and uh, we'll talk about some of the things I've done to seal the enclosure as well. And then I also had to kind of revamp my printing and uh, my printing corner here. But yeah, we'll kind of just talk about the enclosure here and the uh, the construction here is similar to my MPC and C enclosure. I don't know if you guys can see some of the uh, construction here. It's out of two by fours. And this is kind of a design that I have worked with over the last, I don't know, a couple of years making workbenches and all that. So it, it's probably not the most sturdy, but it's like sturdy enough, you know, to, uh, to get the job done. And I have gone ahead and I'm using three quarter inch melamine as enclosure walls. And my thought was, hey, I could use white melamine, that'd be nice for filming. And then I went ahead and covered it with black sound tiles. <laughs> so I have the sound tiles in there. I ordered more than I should have. So I actually spent this past weekend completely filling the inside here. And I'll give you guys a, a, a view of that here in a minute. But my uh, just one thing to mention here on the walls here. I wanted the enclosure walls to be easily removable-ish, and I basically wanted them to sit on the ledge here. You can, you can kind of see that. That way I could unscrew it and then have it still sit on the ledge, and then I could remove it by, my, by myself if I wanted to. Um, I don't see myself doing that a whole lot, but that is something that I had uh, kept in mind. So for the hinges here, I'm not using anything special. These are just regular door hinges. Uh, I did want something somewhat heavy duty. Um, as you're working with the enclosure, that's just something that you don't want to be, um, you know, babying, I guess. I had 3D printed hinges on the MPC and C enclosure. And while they did work, I was always like super nervous that I'd break them. So I, I went with actual hinges this time around. The uh, handles here, I had a little fun with. And these were, uh, I designed these here. And these are, I'm using the same, uh, the same filament that I used for the uh, rest of the machine to be all matchy matchy, you know. So, uh, so that was kind of fun with uh, with this here. So, and then down below here, I have my auto manual off switch. So, I'll uh, I'll get into some of the changes I've made to the electronics here in a minute. Uh, we'll just kind of go over the enclosure here. So, uh, to get around to the side here, I have. A opening around back here so there's an opening around back where all the wires pass through uh, heads up cable management nightmare incoming so I've got everything uh, the enclosure has stayed pretty uh, pretty clean but the cable management behind there has not so someday I'll get to it but that's like number 72 on the uh, priority list so all right, so I think we've talked about the enclosure enough. I, You guys probably get a good feel for how it's put together and all that. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look inside. And I've gone ahead and these doors open one at a time. So the right one opens first and then the left one opens here. And you can see I've got this uh, uh, plate here that will kind of uh, seal up the doors as they close. And they're on magnetic latches here. So when they close, there's no gap in between, at least in theory. So uh, I've got magnetic latches on the bottom here. So you can see my magnetic latches here. And then I've got those the metal plates on the other side here too. So big fan of pocket screws. They are pretty easy, hold well enough. So most of the enclosure is put together with pocket screws. So you guys can see the foam on the bottom here. And that was something I added this past weekend. I haven't really tried it out yet for any cutting, but my intent here was that it would keep the sound and chips inside. 
I realize that chips are going to collect on top here, so I might end up revamping it a little bit. But between the the acoustic tiles and the insulation on the outside, it actually does a pretty good job keeping the noise at an acceptable level. Um, the spouse approval factor is acceptable right now. So um, huge shout out to my wife for putting up with some experimenting that I've had to do to get to this point. So, so I have the, the top here. The acoustic tiles just kind of seal the door up top. And all of the acoustic tiles are held on with, you guys can hear how dead it is in here. It's kind of cool. There's a, a very slight echo, but way better than it was before I had acoustic tiles in here. So um, let's see here. The right hand side here, I have my touch plate and I am using a touch plate from V1 Engineering. And I, I right now this is the best solution for me. I did look at getting a tool height setter, but the I, my, my, my workflow changes too much. And so I thought about having a set tool height setter right here, but then how do I match that with whatever, uh, whatever part I'm working on? Sometimes I have a backer plate. And so I, the, the touch plate works for me right now. I would like to get something that has like a little spring to it. That way when it touches the, uh, the plate, it has a little spring to it. I have broken like two end mills because the touch plate didn't stop in time. I'm not sure if that's a latency issue with, M with uh, Linux CNC, but that is something I'm gonna look into. And then on the left-hand side here, I have my uh, my collet wrenches here. They're not official collet wrenches. They're just a 21 mil and a 30 mil. And uh, you'll, if you're using this spindle, you're going to use those a lot. So get them in a in a spot that is uh, you know easy to reach. So I'll, I also have these on my Amazon wish list. For those of you that don't know, I have a wish list put together that basically has everything on the machine that I've had to order from Amazon. And I have kind of put a list together. It is an affiliate link to kind of help out the channel. And so I'll have that in the description if you're interested in checking out anything that I have purchased here that uh, wasn't from the AliExpress store. All right, so um, we'll kind of move away from the enclosure now and I'll kind of talk about some of the updates I've made over the last two months or so. So We'll kind of get the doors closed here and off to the right here you guys have noticed that I have a shop vac and an air compressor and I'm still kind of I'm still kind of deciding what I want to do with this corner here as you can tell it is pretty cramped to kind of work on you know the printer or whatever and so I might try getting the shop vac on top of the enclosure or something I do have a cyclone for it a dust deputy and I just haven't got time to set that up yet so so for those that are uh, well initiated in the shop vac and uh, air compressor world, you'll notice that these are both quiet units and that is on purpose. I, like I said, I'm in a basement here and I, I know it's a little extra work to get everything working well in a, in a basement shop, but I am overall very happy with the noise levels of the air compressor and the shop vac. So the shop vac, it's a, a DeWalt here. I'll get, I'll get a model number on screen here when I do the edit. But, uh, and then the air compressor is this California Air Tools. I believe it's an eight gallon tank. And uh, the eight gallon tank is, uh, it's not enough to keep up with like my half hour cut for the keyboard video. And so uh, it did get pretty warm uh, during operation. But uh, as you can see here, I have a solenoid on here and I'll talk about the solenoid here in a minute. Uh, I've got some auto manual switching going on that makes life a lot easier to control not only the air compressor but the shop vac as well. All right, so let's talk auto manual control for a minute. So I have the that uh, switch on the front of the enclosure and that is a what two position switch so either uh, one or two and right now I have it set so that the the one position is auto control and so um, We'll take a step back here this outlet right here that I added this receptacle this entire box is Controlled off of this relay that I've added and you can see this white relay here and so Basically and so this is a 16 amp relay so the 16 amp relay controls this 15 amp gang box 
And so anything I plug in there will be able to handle it just fine. So the this relay is controlled via one of two ways. And you can see this is the coil side up here. I've got two different sets of wires here. And so basically the front switch will be in either one or two. And when I have it in the first position, I let the VFD pull that relay in. And so that's basically auto control. So then there, therefore when the spindle turns on, this white relay gets pulled in, which then turns on my shop vac with the receptacle here. And I hope I'm explaining that well enough. I know it's kind of a, a lot to think about here, uh, you know, verbally explaining it all. And so the nice part about that is that the, the shop vac will then turn on when the VFD turns on. And so that's pretty nice. And then the second set of wires up top here are for switch number two. And so when I turn the switch from one to off to two, that pulls this relay in manually. And so therefore, if I wanna pull the hose off of the spindle and then clean out the uh, enclosure manually, I can then just flip the switch to two, pull the hose off and start cleaning out the enclosure manually. So that has been a super big helpful uh, kind of a addition that I've added in the last couple of weeks. So one more thing on the auto manual control, you can see here, I've got the two sets of wires here, one for auto control, one for manual control. I am using uh, 20, my 24 volt power supply, the meanwhile here for my control. And so uh, one nice thing about being able to do that is depending on if I'm cutting wood or uh, metal, I have my solenoid here, let me fumble it around here. And so I can, I have this solenoid here. This is a 24 volt solenoid is basically wired in series with the coil of that white relay there. And so this solenoid pu gets pulled in whether my air compressor is plugged in or not. But then the nice part about that is I can easily switch between aluminum and wood depending on whether I want the shop back running or whether I want the air solenoid running. So this has been a huge, huge help in just kind of improving the workflow of the entire machine. So I know that I've been babbling a lot here, but I would just want to kind of explain this auto manual control the best I can here. So moving on a little bit here, I've got my water pump way down low here, and this is not the best spot for it. I'd, ideally, I'll probably move it behind the wires here, and uh, I'll probably have to extend my blue tubing there, but the Water pump, not much has changed except the fact that I am no longer controlling it with the spindle relay. I actually just water, wired the water pump right into my contactor here. And so therefore, whenever the entire enclosure is on, the water pump is on. You know, that does put a little more wear onto the water pump uh, because it's running a little more often than if it was just controlled by the spindle, by the VFD. However, my, my theory there was that I would wire in a flow switch as an input to the breakout board. And therefore, if the flow switch ever lost flow, it would stop the machine. The flow switch that I ordered did not work the way I wanted it to. I'm not sure if I just got a bad one or if I'm doing something wrong, but I am probably going to rewire the pump and get it, get it off of the contactor and get it back on the VFD. And then what I'll be doing is adding this uh, flow indicator to the uh, spindle here. And then I will probably mount this something like here. And this is just an alpha cool flow indicator that I can then tap into and mount something like that, sort of. You guys get the idea. So I do have a small rebuild planned for the near future. I bought these from Greg in uh, Discord. Um, some of you guys might flame me for purchasing a CNC made part. However, my time is very limited lately. So that was, uh, that was well worth it for, uh, for not having to deal with that. So I am happy with the machine, but I could be a lot happier. You guys probably saw from my keyboard video that I was not going nearly as fast as I wanted to for my travel moves. And I've made me these uh, aluminum roller plates, but my my roller here is not 100% square. I think my right one is a little bit worse. 
Uh, my, it'll be hard to tell, but if I go too fast, then I'll stall the motor because when I if I tighten down my plates too much, then it will bind up the bearing and then cause it to stall. I think you guys can see here, see how my, my bearing here isn't quite flush with the roller. And so that prevents me from tightening it down all the way. And then if I tighten it down too much, it will bind the machine. So I guess that is kind of a something to look out for if you are building it. Uh, I bought new uh, chunks of two by three steel, made sure they're nice and square and we're gonna be doing a small rebuild on that. So these are V3 plates and I am going to be putting these on and kind of doing a, a small update here. Uh, I'm just not happy with this finish on the uh, V2.1 plates here. So uh, I had a feeling this would happen. I went through like two or three different small rebuilds with the MPCNC. You know, you just kind of get it built and then you kind of find out what works and what doesn't work. So that is kind of what we're, uh, what we're going through right now. All right, guys, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, we just hit 2,700 subscribers, which is uh, pretty awesome. So I uh, just wanna give a, a little thank you for the uh, support that we've gotten lately. If you guys have any questions about the setup or the wiring or the enclosure, you know, feel free to leave a comment and I'm, I'm pretty active here on YouTube. So I will do my best to get to the comments and we will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.